it's actually fairly common for me to stumble upon a Linux distribution that I've never heard of before. Because there's just a lot of Linux distributions out there, and I'm not all-knowing, despite what I may claim. And therefore, I often just happen to, upon Linux distributions that I've just never heard of before. Even if they are somewhat popular, I may not have heard of them before, because I don't try a lot of Linux distributions that are kind of out there, unless I'm making a video about them. So when I stumble upon a distribution, usually on DistroWatch, and I find one that I didn't know about, be about before, I usually ask, what the f*** is that distro? You know what I mean? Usually there's more swearing there, but I'm trying to tone it down for the children. So I recently stumbled upon a distribution called Makulu. Now, from what I can tell, Makulu has been around for a very long time, at least 10 years, and... It definitely has some interesting things going for it. I will say that. I have played around with it for a little while now, and I'm ready to make a video about it. Now, the first thing I will tell you is that this is a very confusing distribution. And not confusing like the other distributions in this series, in that they do weird things for weird reasons. More, it's a confusing distribution because I don't know why more people don't really know about it, because it's actually kind of cool. So... Let's go ahead and take a look at Makulu Linux. Now, like usual in this series, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the website. Now, as you know, at least if you've watched any of the videos in this series before, I very often judged a distribution up front based on how good its website is. And in this case, I can judge it just as I usually do because this website is actually pretty good. Now, in terms of information and stuff like that this is actually kind of high on the list in terms of where this website falls on all the rest of them that are in this series because if you've watched any of the videos in this series before in which you'll find a playlist at the end of the video you'll know that very often the distros in this series tend to have really bad websites or they don't have websites at all they just use sourceforge whatever and, well, that doesn't necessarily always mean that the distribution is bad. Oftentimes it does. Like, if the developer hasn't put some effort into creating at least a single-page website that shows off what the distribution is about, chances are they've also made some interesting choices in the distribution itself as well. So, in the case of Makulu Linux, the website is actually really good. It has a wiki, so if you wanted to find out some information about the distribution, you could. Now, one thing I will notice is that it is a very slow website, but there's a ton of information here, so if you can put up with that, you can just see that there's links upon links upon links of stuff here for you to check out if you're interested in gaining more information about Makulu. Also, things like the forum is here, live chat is here, the ability to submit a bug report is here, uh, the download button or at least a, a link to the download page is right at the top. They don't hide it like some distributions. Now, the one thing you'll notice throughout this entire video is that th they do tend to put their pro version up front quite a lot. So if that's something that turns you off, now I know a lot of people just, they, they don't like that some distributions have a different version, like a pro version. I used to be one of those people, like, I didn't really care that Zorin OS has a pro version. I, it doesn't really seem like that's the Linux way. But as I've furthered my interest in Linux, I've come to realize that distributions need to make money. And a pro version is at least one way of doing it. Now, in, in the case of this pro version, it is $30, so it's not exorbitantly expensive, but you don't have to buy it if you don't want to. The free version is completely functional. It has most of the stuff that you would get no matter what, you know, it comes, it's a fully functioning Linux distribution, and that's great. If you want the pro version, you get some extra themes, which I'll talk about themes more later, and a few other things, but they're not essential. Now, they also have a link to this droid option here, which is a project that they're using to get Android support on Makulu. Now, I haven't played around with this at all, so I don't know how well it works, but it definitely does exist. So, if that's something that interests you, that is also a possibility on Makulu. Now, another thing I'll say before we jump into the installation is that the ISO is fairly large. Usually, when you're talking on a Linux distribution, 
you're looking at around a two gigabyte ISO. That's usually about average for a ISO. Now, obviously, there's plenty of them that are smaller. And like if you download something like Arco or something like that, you're going to have one that's way bigger. This one here is about three and a half gigabytes. So it is kind of hefty. And you'll see why, because it comes with a lot of stuff installed. And it has a lot of interesting features that you don't see basically anywhere else, which is one of the reasons why I'm actually quite surprised at how kind of cool this distribution is. So let me stop talking about how cool it is and show you it. So let's go ahead and jump into a virtual machine. So when you first log into Makulu, you're going to get a scrolling line of text, which is fairly normal with Linux, of course. And then you're going to get this screen here. Don't worry about that. It's just kind of hang up. It's going to hang up here for a second. And then it's going to jump into something that you've probably never seen before. And that is a welcome presentation slash something or the other. I don't actually know what you'd call this. Now, the thing is, is that this is not very intuitive. You have to click on this guy in order for him to go. As far as I can tell, if you don't click on the guy, it doesn't go. But the rest of this stuff is automated and it's a sales pitch. It reminds me very much of like the, the slides you get when you install Windows. You know, you get the how awesome Windows is kind of thing. The difference here and the difference between the slides you get when you install Linux is that this is doing nothing for you, right? There's nothing going on behind the scenes. It's like you're not watching this as you install something. You still have to install it afterwards. And while this is cool and it's definitely neat, I don't see a way of getting by it is the thing. Like, I don't know if like I've tried clicking on it and right clicking on it and all those sorts of stuff. And it just doesn't seem to be something that you can skip past. The only interactable slide, as far as I can tell, is that first one where you have to click in order to get to get started. If you don't click, it actually times out. It takes you to light DM. Now, the problem with that, of course, is that... Oh, you want to know what? See, I just figured something out. If you hover over this, you can actually see that this thing here is a video. That's the reason why it's not something... It's That's the reason why you have to click at the beginning. It's actually making you press play. Um, I suppose the best way to skip through this is if you, you know, fast forward through it, I, I guess. I've never seen a distribution that plays a video for you before you can literally do anything. And the, you, as you can see, it's about two minutes long. And, um, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the end because if you want to if you want to read all that stuff, you can. It's just, it's, it's a, like, it's, it's a sales pitch. And I'll talk about some of the options that it, you know, it tells you about as we go through. So... In the live ISO, it pops up the main feature of Makulu. Okay, so the main feature that this thing offers that makes it different from any other desktop distribution out there, at least for the most part, there are some that do some similar things. I'll talk about that later. But the thing that makes this fairly unique is that it gives you options for desktop layout. Now, it makes it seem on the website that this is actually giving you different desktop environments. It doesn't actually say that, but it comes across as kind of implied. That's not true, okay? It's it's not. What you're seeing here is a very customized version of GNOME. And I know what you're saying, like, that doesn't look like GNOME all that much. That kind of looks like KDE. That was my first thought, too, was like, you know, that kind of looks like KDE, especially when you see, like that there menu that looks kind of like a KDE menu and it, they actually have a KDE version so if we click on this and switch to the plasma version we'll see something interesting like there is a menu here that looks like the KDE menu like that looks like the kickoff menu right like if you've ever used plasma that looks like the plasma menu but the thing is is once you click on like the time here yeah that's GNOME and they are, they're all like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's really kind of awesome that they've gone through the trouble of all of these desktop layouts to make them look like they have using a desktop environment that is known for being anti-customization. Like, if you've used this for a while, you can no longer state that GNOME can't be customized because it can. So, for example, let's click on the Unity one. You click on Unity, it's going to look like Unity. It does take three or four seconds for everything to switch by. And one thing you'll notice is if you're in a VM and you have to set your re display resolution, you have to do that every time you switch themes, which is kind of annoying. But that's a VM thing. I'm assuming that if you're on hardware, that wouldn't happen. But this is the uni Unity version. And we'll go through the rest of these layouts when we have installed it. So let's go ahead and close this and then we'll install Makulu. So the install option is right here. 
Now, it does want you to set the server location, but the, I know that the server location is, it, the default server location is fine for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit start installation. Now, here are things that you should know. Makulu is based on Ubuntu, I think. The reason why I say I think is because the distro watch page in its helpfulness has told me that it's a Debian slash Ubuntu distro. I know what that means. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it's all Ubuntu. And the reason why I say that is because it has a lot of the Ubuntu features. So it has the Ubuntu updater. It, it even says Ubuntu in some of that scrolling text that you saw earlier. So I'm pretty sure that this is based on Ubuntu. But it doesn't use the Ubuntu installer. It uses Calamari's. So we have an interesting icon there for Makulu. So we're going to hit next. And there is the time zone. That's fine. And that keyboard is fine. And then here's where the first thing that I'm going to kind of crit criticize really is. There's no option here to choose whether or not you want a swap or not. You're going to get a swap whether you like it or not, unless you manually partition. And it's going to be a pretty sizable swap partition. It's going to it's going to take your memory and multiply it by two, a factor of two-ish kind of thing. So I have four gigabytes of RAM assigned to this VM. It's giving it 8.4 gigabytes of swap. And you can't turn that off again unless you manually partition. Another thing that's not here is encryption. So usually when you're use, when you're looking at the Calamari's installer, there's a little checkbox down here that says encrypt drive. That is not there. So if you need encryption, you'll either have to use a different way of encrypting your drive, which I'm assuming there's a way to actually do that. I'm not actually sure. Uh, or you just won't be able to do that using Makulu. So let's go ahead and hit, and hit next. And then this is the standard credentials page. So we're going to enter our credentials here. And uh, I suppose we can give it a better name than that. Makulu. And uh, give it a very strong and complicated password. Now, here's another thing that I'll cr criticize. Uh, they have, by default, selected login automatically. I don't know what the point of asking for a password is if you're going to have it log in automatically. So I'm going to uncheck that and use the same password for the administrator account. So we're going to go ahead and hit next and then install. Now, from what I saw earlier when I installed this, this doesn't take all that long. And there are some slides here, at least one slide or two slides, and it shows you some stuff that the desktop can do. Now, the thing is, is that you saw that video that they put together at the beginning, like the one that you really can't skip by. That was really well put together. You know, it had really cool animations, very nice drawings and, you know, uh, artwork and stuff like that. The slides here kind of leave something to be desired. I'm just going to put that out there. I mean, they're showing a monitor that looks like it's from the early 2000s or something like that. And, the, you know, it's just not... You would think that as they put it all that effort into the video, they didn't put as much effort into the slides. So it would have been actually kind of cool if they just put the video here. You know, this is where the video should go. And you might get people to actually pay attention during this period here other than walking away and getting coffee. So I'm going to walk away and get some coffee. I will resume the video when this is done. Okay, that's done. I'm going to go ahead and hit restart now. And then hold done. Now, the reason why I'm going not going to cut away here is because when it actually restarts we get some interesting logos so we're going to hit enter to get past grub and then we're going to see some interesting things happen i think uh yeah there we go we got a hippo interesting and also the virtual keyboard comes up i'm assuming that this is a vm thing uh, and, and that this is just something that happens when you use a vm but it's not that big of a deal the regular keyboard still works so now we're going to go into Makulu and this is what you get when you first open up Makulu. Now the first thing I'm actually going to do before we do anything else is fix that display resolution. Although I'm probably going to have to do that um, multiple times here because we're going to switch some themes here uh, over and over again. And uh, that's going to mean that the display resolution is going to be go away. So 1920, uh, uh, wow, typing is really hard, like so. And uh, there we go. That looks much better. Now we can close this. Now this is the Makulu Linux setup manager. And you don't actually get the desktop manager by default when you uh, first boot into an installed system. That's in the menu. You have to go click on that or whatever. It's on, also on the desktop there. This is what you get when you've installed it. Now it gives you links for driver setup, the firewall, which comes pre-installed which is nice. I think all Linux distributions should have a firewall pre-installed. allows you to choose a language. It allows you to tinker with your network settings if you need to, select some online accounts, 
back up your system, check for updates, and to donate. So those are the things that you get with a welcome with the welcome screen. It does not link to the tutorial, which I find interesting. I thought that it would. Uh, it does have the tutorial videos here on the desktop, which we'll, we may or may not look at later. But the uh, point is, is that it's not here up front in the welcome screen, which I actually thought it would be, but it's not. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and click on that. None of those things we actually need to do. And then this is the default desktop layout and it is very windows-esque but you can tell that it's gnome so this is probably like the arc menu or something i'm not actually sure what it is but it's it's gnome so if you click on the clock you get the gnome stuff and it does have a conky so if you want the conky there is a way to turn that off if you want i'll show you that here in a minute and other than that we're going to focus on the things that make this interesting. So we're going to go back to the desktop manager and take a look at these layouts. Now, if you pay for the pro version, you get eight more layouts. Now, the thing is, is that I don't know that I would pay for eight more layouts. And the reason why I say that is because all of these, they're kind of the same. And I didn't really recognize that until I switched between them for the first time. And, you know, I thought that there'd be more variety here. And there's really not. So there are a few that are fairly unique. So, for example, the Unity one, which we already saw, looks like this. And, it, again, it takes a little while to get set up. And it will reset the display resolution. We'll change that once we're done changing the themes. The other one that looks fairly unique is the one called Core. This is going to be similar to what you'd see with Mac OS or something like that. And uh, you get the, the pan panel along the bottom, panel along the top. Uh, the other ones are all basically windows. And I find that a little disappointing because like I said, I thought that there were going to be some more variations on themes, but apparently there's only three different ways you can do a desktop layout. So if we go to this one here called Lindos, this is the most windows like version. And it looks like this. It even has the Windows X XP esque wallpaper. You know, and the menu looks like this, okay? To me, that looks more like the cinnamon menu, but whatever. Uh, the Flash one also looks kind of like Windows. It looks, it's a white version of the exact same thing we just went, you know, past. I mean, it's not exactly the same menu, but you kind of get the, the, I mean, it's the same layout, okay? A little bit more transparency here. Uh, different icon set, slightly, I guess. Uh, we looked at core. Dash is going to be a little bit different in that it has the panel in a different position. So that looks like this. It has the panel along the side. But again, same menu, okay? Menu is actually in the exact same spot. Uh, simple, again, looks like Windows. I mean, this is basically a Windows setup. It does use a slightly bigger menu and, again, more transparency, but basically the same. We looked at Unity, and the disappointing one here kind of for me is Gnome, because you'd think that the Gnome one would look more like Gnome, uh, but it doesn't really. It looks like Windows. You get the Gnome launcher here, which is by far the most unique launcher that they have here, which I suppose is different enough, but it doesn't have the bar along the top or the icons along the side like Gnome does. It looks more like Gnome with some customizations, which is, again, fine, but it doesn't really stand out when you have so many that look with this panel along the bottom and the menu here. You know what I mean? And then the last one is the Plasma one, which you guessed it, it looks like Windows. It's a little disappointing that they all kind of look exactly the same in terms of layout. Now, like I said, they have slight differences, obviously. Some of the menus are a little bit different, and that's great. I mean, if that's what they're aiming for, it's fine. It's not as exciting as I thought at first. That doesn't mean that this is bad, right? It just doesn't make me interested in buying another eight desktop layouts that are all probably going to look the same. And the thing is, is that on their website, at least from the brief look that I had around, they don't actually show you what those layouts are. Like, they've put some effort into making a cool video, but they don't really show you what you get when you... I mean, they tell you what you get with the Pro license, but they don't really tell you what those extra layouts are, what they look like. That'd be kind of cool. I mean, it's possible that it's buried somewhere in the documentation and I just didn't see it, but uh, it's definitely not front and center. 
So that is the desktop manager. Now you'll see that there's four buttons there along the bottom and that's where this becomes a little bit more extensible. So for example, you can use this to enable or disable the conky here, which is, they're calling the desktop clock, but I'm pretty sure that this is conky. Uh, you can change the uh, clock format and stuff like that. You can enable, enable, disable, do some additional options, change the desktop icons, whether they're there or not. Uh, some of this stuff is a setting front end for GNOME extensions, which is all this stuff is based on. This is GNOME. And all the stuff that they've done here with desktop layouts is done through GNOME extensions. So just keep that in mind as you go. So if you, we've closed this, it does take us back to the desktop manager, which is nice. The panel dock options is basically a front end for what I'm guessing is dash to dock, which is cool. I mean, they put a lot of work into creating this kind of stuff. So, so they've created some front ends for these GNOME extensions, which is, and, and they've done that so that it kind of meshes into a cohesive experience, which I find really nice. The theme manager allows you to change the accent colors and the cursor. Now, the thing about the cursors, yeah, those are all really bad cursors. I mean, <laughs> and the one normal one that they have is this one here, and look how freaking huge mungus that thing is. That's half the screen. I, I would beg them to put some regular cursors in here, give you an option for some cursors out of the box. Obviously, you can change this with GNOME tweaks if you wanted to, to find a regular cursor, which is something that I would definitely do, but the really weird cursors that they have by default is it's not great i don't like any of these things uh, i mean this is the one i believe that they have by default and that is I mean, at least in some of the layouts it's unwieldy <laughs> okay let's just put it that way i'm gonna i don't even know which one to select probably this one here this is the the least offensive one so i'm gonna close that yeah oh i should show you the accent color so if you change the accent colors you'll notice that the folders change color and they do have a couple dark modes so you can select accent colors with different dark modes and that's how you would select dark mode so we can close this and then go to the wallpaper manager which is base is basically a front end for the gnome settings wallpaper setter i'm not actually sure if this is something that they built or if it's something that they're using but it does allow you just to set wallpapers and choose the scale of that wallpaper so you can also get to the settings for the wallpaper from here. Interestingly, the icon settings are in two different places. So let's go ahead and close this. That's the interesting part of Makulu in terms of what they've done for customization. Now, let me go ahead and change that resolution again. So I should be able to do that. Yep, there we go. And I will say in the proper resolution, it looks really nice. Uh, all the all of the desktop environment or the desktop layouts look really nice, despite them looking very similar to one another. They all look really nice, so there's nothing much to complain about there. And I find that it's cool that they give you the option. I would love to see the ability to create your own desktop layout and save it. So for, if you've ever used Mate, Mate has the ability using Mate tweaks to set different desktop layouts. So especially Ubuntu Mate has this, right? And it gives you like four or five options between like the traditional GNOME setup, or GNOME 2 setup, I should say, and like the old style Unity is there, I believe. A Redmond version is there, it looks like Windows. And the thing about that, which is cool, is that you can actually create your own desktop layout and then save it so that if you wanted to switch between them and your own custom ones, you can do that. That'd be awesome here. I would guess that they'd probably bury that in the pro version. Maybe that's even there in the pro version. I don't know. But that would be cool to see for everybody to have access to because that's one of the things that makes Makulu kind of interesting is that it has that theme switcher or desktop layout switcher. And if you could add your own desktop layouts to that, that'd be kind of cool. So before we jump out of this and make a conclusion, let's talk about some of the particulars in terms of apps and other setups. So if we go to the menu here, you can see one of the things that's going to just seriously turn away a lot of people. The default browser here is Google Chrome. Now, I did a poll the other day on the community tab and some people said they would be okay with it. Some people just said it's okay that they just install it. And that made up a vast, um, a majority of people. But there is quite a lot of people who said they wouldn't even consider using a distro that in, has Google Chrome installed by default. And this is one of those distributions that has Google Chrome installed by default. Me personally, I don't really care all that much. I would just uninstall it and make it in Firefox. But 
I would prefer them use Firefox by default. Uh, just, I mean, this is Linux. Try to at least promote open source software. I would, I would hope that you people would do that. But the vast majority of people in the world use Chrome, so they're assuming that if you're a new user, you're probably going to want Chrome, and that's probably sadly true. Let's go ahead and go through accessories here. The, we have the extensions file, uh, the extensions application, which is for GNOME extensions. You've seen that before. Now, the interesting choice here for files is that they don't have Nautilus here. This is Nemo. Now, Nemo is a fantastic file manager, don't get me wrong, but you got to remember that this is GNOME. So, And GNOME's default file manager is Nautilus. Uh, and as far as I, I know, this is the default file manager right here. This is the one that they link to. I don't know if Nautilus is, is on the system. It is not. Just Nemo is on, on the system, which is highly interesting because if you know anything about GNOME, now one of the things that is true is that, it, is that Nautilus used to be basically GNOME. Like it's used, Nautilus used to be like so integrated into GNOME, you couldn't separate them. You took one thing out, you wouldn't have GNOME anymore. Like the desktop just wouldn't work. They've spent a lot of time, the GNOME guys have, over the last couple of years separating those two, two out. So I think that that's the reason why it's possible for them to use Nemo here with probably with minimal fuss. But it's still interesting that they've managed to separate those out so well that Nautilus is just not here. Now, personally, I think Nemo is fan a way better file manager than Nemo or than Nautilus is. So that's not a big deal for me. We have Play on Linux, which is whatever, for whatever reason listed as an accessory here here we have text info uh, varieties for wallpapers warpinator is going to be a file transfer tool uh, we have uh, what i believe to be gnome weather yep that's gnome weather we also have wine tricks which is a tool for wine and we have x archiver which is to unarchive compressed files in graphics we have no max that's it. No GIMP there or anything like that, at least not in that category. In terms of, in terms of Internet, we have Discord pre-installed and Google Chrome. So both of those things that you don't normally see pre-installed on a Linux distribution. I'm just going to put that out there. You don't normally see those. I mean, I would install Discord anyways because I use Discord, but it's not usually uh, pre-installed on a Linux distro. It's just not. So we, in terms of, um, especially... Uh, you're seeing, as we go through this, that th this is a little weird. So you have Google Chrome, you have Discord, you don't have an Office suite. It's not installed by default. LibreOffice is not here. Uh, and uh, Or any of the other fantastic Office suites that we have on offer, it's just not installed by default. But they've installed Chrome and Discord. A little weird, right? In terms of sound vid video, we have DroidCam, which is a tool for you to use your webcam or your phone as your webcam if you use an Android player. MPV is here. That's an excellent choice for viewing videos vlc is also here which is uh, also a wonderful choice for viewing videos interestingly it doesn't appear to have a music player of any kind now mpv and M and vlc will both play mp3s if you want them to but the fact that it's there's not an option there for like a dedicated music player interesting that they didn't choose one again especially in light that they installed discord by default i don't i'm i'm harping on that but it, it feels weird that they've made that choice right in uh system tools uh, we have BleachBit installed by default, uh, the Comfort Editor uh, Desktop Manager, which we actually looked like, GNOME Disks, the GW Package Installer, which is a GUI front end for installing dev packages, Gparted is here, uh, Gpaste, which is a clipboard history manager, HTOP is installed by default, Grub Customizer, which will allow you to customize the Grub screen, a language installer for installing more languages, LightDM, GTK Greeter settings, so you can change the theme for, your, for light dm uh, main menu which is going to be that thing that we saw there okay so maybe that's not what i thought that that was going to be like the welcome screen or something but no that takes you to the launcher for gnome which even which even though we're not using that particular and now it's there and how to get rid of it oh escape gets rid of it that was that's weird <laughs> that's a little weird uh, we have uh p sensor which is going to be a graphical t uh, temperature monitor for your your hardware power statistics and then go back here damn that's a uh, now i remember why i don't like kickoff as a menu uh samba shares so they got samba installed by default they have some screensaver options uh, synaptic package manager is here but also in terms of graphical software store you have gnome software here 
Now, the one thing that I don't know is whether or not this is going to be... So they have Snap Store installed by default, but you can also get from the Makulu uh, repos as well, right from the GUI here, which is cool. So Snaps are installed by default, so, which is, again, this is based on Ubuntu, so that's not that surprising. And they also have both GNOME Terminal and XFCE Terminal installed. They have Time Shift installed, which is for backups. And then finally, they have GNOME Tweaks right here installed, which is cool, because then we can go into the appearance and the cursor and see if we can find literally anything else other than the... Uh, no, all of those are terrible. None of those are the things that I would want. Okay, well, that's disappointing. I have to install a different cursor anyway. So uh, they do have GNOME Tweaks installed by default. So those are the things that are that make Makulu interesting and also a little peculiar. I could probably reboot and show you what the memory usage is, but if you've used GNOME before, you know it's not going to be very good. It's usually about a gigabyte, and it is about a gigabyte on Makulu as well. Other than that, there's not a lot to say. Now... I've now messed around with this for a couple hours, including making the video and the time I spent with it beforehand. And my enthusiasm for it has gone all over the place because when I first saw the the desktop manager, I was really excited about it. And even after I used it for a little while, you know, switched between some of the themes, you know, it was still really cool. And I do think that it's actually really cool. I wish that they had a few more themes that were a little bit different, you know. So they have Unity, they have the core, and then several of them that kind of look like the Windows standard layout. Now, they obviously have some differences. There are a few different menus or whatever, but for the most part, they're the standard paradigm of Windows that you would normally see on, you know, every desktop environment ever. Which, again, is a little bit disappointing for me because I'd like to see some variety there, but, again, it's there, and that's kind of cool. In terms of everything else, I have to give them some props for taking GNOME and making it very customizable. They have tweaks installed by default. They have the GNOME Extension Manager installed by default. And that is really good because GNOME by default is not very customizable. This is a version of GNOME that has a lot of customizations done to it, but also would allow you to use a lot of customizations. So that's actually really good. Now, in terms of all the other stuff that goes along with a Linux dist distro, this is going to run basically like Ubuntu would, right? It's going to have a lot of the quirks that Ubuntu has. It's going to have the Ubuntu software updater. You know, I mean, that thing's going to pop up every from time to time and ask you to update. So that's going to happen. Uh, it's going to have the normal quirks of using Ubuntu in the terminal. So you're going to use app to install stuff. And, you know, it does not seem to have the obsessions with snaps that Ubuntu does. So, for example, when we opened up the GNOME Software Center, you notice that it opened right up, right? So that is not a snap. No snap in the history of snaps has ever opened that fast, so we know that it's not a snap. And that's, again, a good thing. It has snaps installed, but it doesn't seem to have the reliance on them that Ubuntu seems to have. Maybe that's the reason why they've gone with Google Chrome, because Google Chrome doesn't have a snap as far as I know, or maybe they do. It's just not official. I, don't, I actually don't know. The one thing we know for sure is that Chromium, by default in Ubuntu, is a snap. Firefox, by default in Ubuntu, is a snap. So maybe that's the reason why they've made that choice. You never know. My favorite part about it is that this here would actually make me kind of want to use GNOME. And it takes a lot of effort to make me want to use GNOME. You know what I mean? Uh, it does bother me a little bit. Now, I, like I said, we can I can show you this again. You'll find this thing here all over the place. Upgrade to Pro. It's in the menu. I haven't noticed any pop-ups or anything like that. So it's not totally annoying. But and I'm assuming that you can probably delete this if you wanted to. Yeah, you can you can remove that if you want to, and you can remove it from the menu as well. But the point is, is that that's kind of there. And one place is probably enough, but again, you know, you want your distro to make some money, but it feels a little pushy to me, but also not as pushy as it probably could be. I don't know. It's just something that you kind of have to keep in mind, that this distro does have a pro version, and they want you to upgrade to it, for sure. So, anyways, that is Makulu Linux. It, just a very brief look at Makulu Linux. It's interesting. It's more interesting than I thought it would be when I first decided I was going to take a look at it. So that's what I consider a win. It's definitely not one of those distributions like, I think, like, ah... Uh, 
I'm not sure why this exists, because you can tell why this exists. They've done a good job of doing some unique things, and that's not something you can say for a lot of Linux distributions. So, if you have comments on Makulu, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter, at LinuxCast. If you want to follow me on Mastodon or any of those other social media networks, you can find those links in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all of these fine people. I really, truly do appreciate everybody who supports me on Patreon and YouTube. I can't even begin to say how thankful and grateful I am to everyone who does support me. It comes as a constant surprise that, are, that anybody actually wants to do so. So thanks everybody who does support me. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.